Hey guys, it's Cassie here with Math OMG. Today we're going to be talking about vectors, specifically direction angles using vectors. We have these super simple formulas that we're going to be using to help us. Some of the things on this slide are really important as we're going through and trying to solve. So the first thing is that a vector can be written this way. So V and the absolute value looking symbols, which actually mean magnitude. If we take the magnitude of our vector, so the length of our vector, and we multiply it by cosine times the angle of the direction the vector is going in, that gives us our horizontal component. So how far or fast or what is the force of it moving horizontally? And then if we take the magnitude sine theta, that tells us vertically what's happening. I'm going to have you guys write down these reminders or keep these in the back of your mind as you're going through and solving these. Sometimes math is awesome because you can solve a problem so many different ways and get the same answer. However, vectors, I'm going to recommend that when you're solving for angles, you just stick with cosine because there's less to remember and I'm going to give you the two scenarios you're going to run into with using cosine tangent and sine, there's other scenarios, but I think it's just easiest. Pick one, go with that one. And then another thing you're going to need to remember when you're doing these is to make sure you check your quadrant. That's the most important thing you have to remember. All right, so let's do this first one. It asks us to find the components of the vector and it gives us the direction angle is 115 degrees and it tells us that the magnitude is six. So our theta is 115 and our magnitude of our vector v is 6. Our mission is to find it in component form. So component form is that these arrows or brackets a comma b. So that's what component form looks like. And then our game plan for doing that is going to be to use that formula. So take the magnitude of our vector, multiply it by cosine of our angle, and then take the magnitude of our vector and multiply it by sine of the angle. And then that's going to give us our vector. And here's a representation of what it looks like so that we can keep in mind what we're trying to do. So let's actually go through and solve this and make sure that our vector matches where it's supposed to be. So it should end up in quadrant two because this is 115 degrees as the direction and then six is the length of this vector. So our magnitude is 6, so we plug in 6, cosine 115, 6 sine 115, and then our calculator is really just going to do it for us. So when we simplify this, we're going to get negative 2.5, 5.4. So that's from the calculator. I know it says round to the nearest hundredths place, but... I'm sort of a tenths place person. I don't know why, I just like tenths place better than hundredths. So our vector is negative 2.5, 5.4, meaning that I am negative 2.5 length, or really just I'm 2.5 to the left, and 5.4 vertically. And so that would make sense that for this vector because if we think about the location of it, it is definitely has a shorter distance horizontally than vertically. And since this is negative, it puts me in the right quadrant. So that's just a quick way to check to make sure, yeah, I plugged it in my calculator right and it's done correctly. Now we're gonna do some examples of going the other direction. So these are two separate examples. We're gonna do A and then we're gonna do B. And it asks us to find the magnitude and direction given component form. So we just took magnitude, direction, and found component form. Now, given component form, can we go backwards and find magnitude and angle, which we can. So I first notice that they're in component form. That's something that, um, component, 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 oh man, this is why I'm not, so I'm a math teacher, not an English teacher. So they're in component form. If I spelled that wrong, I'm going to feel really stupid. And my mission is to find their magnitude. So I'm going to write down the magnitude formula. So I have to find the magnitude of u and v, which is going to be this formula for each. So u and v. That's how you find magnitude. And then I'm going to find theta for both of these. 
Now, I'm going to write down the formula for this, and I hope it's not confusing where it comes from, but we know that the first value, the a in our component form of our vector, is equal to the magnitude of our vector times cosine theta. So I'm going to use this formula to find theta. And then our game plan is going to be just use the formulas that we've just created in our mission up here. All right, so we're gonna do A first. So the first thing you have to find the magnitude first. So I'm gonna find the magnitude of U. So the magnitude of U is just going to be the square root of three squared plus two squared, which is the square root of 13. Easy, that one's easy. And then I have to find theta. So to find theta, I say A, my first coordinate, is equal to my magnitude, which is this case is the square root of 13, cosine theta. And again, this comes from that formula on that first slide that we did where we had to find the component form. That's where this comes from. You could also say that two is equal to square root of 13 sine theta, but I like to use cosines when I'm finding angles, so I'm just gonna stick with cosine. So if I am trying to get cosine by itself, I divide both sides by square root of 13. And then I take the inverse of 3 over rad 13, which gives me my angle of 33.7 degrees. Now we have to check to make sure this is the right angle. So 3, 2, I go over 3, up 2, draw in my vector. So 33.7 this vector needs to be between 0 and 90, and 33.7 is between 0 and 90, so I'm good. I found the right angle. Now this scenario, we're going to see where that may not happen right away. So again, find the magnitude of V, I square root the first, or square the first term, add it to the second term squared, and that gives me the square root of 29. So that is my magnitude for vector v. Then to find the angle, I do the same thing. So I set my first term, which is a, so negative 2 equals the magnitude of my vector times cosine theta, and then I just solve. So I divide by rad 29, and I do cosine inverse of negative 2 over rad 29, and I get a theta value of approximately 112 degrees. So let's look at, let's draw on our vector and see if that even makes sense. So I'm at negative two, negative five. So negative two, negative five is going to be right there-ish. Now, if I'm on the unit circle, this is zero, this is 90, this is 180, and this is 270, and then back to 360. So 112 is not down here where my vector is supposed to be. 112 would be up here, which just means when I find my angle, I have two options. I can go counterclockwise and follow the unit circle, or I can go clockwise and get to my vector. So that means if I went 112, I really went negative 112. So remember, if you go clockwise, all right, clockwise around your unit circle, that's the negative angle. If you go counterclockwise, that's positive. So I know that I went a negative 112 to get to my vector. However, we like to keep our angles positive and just to make things more fun and more complicated, you need to give me the positive angle. So I wanna figure out, well, what's this blue portion then? If I know I went 112 this direction, what did I go the correct direction or the positive direction, I should say. So I know it needs to be between 180 and 270. And I know that the whole, if I put this together, this is a circle, so the whole thing is 360 degrees. So the whole thing is 360 and this portion is 112. If I subtract those, I'm gonna get 248 so that means this blue portion is 248, which definitely makes sense because that's in between 180 and 270. So theta is really negative 112 or positive 200 
and 48. And so I'm done. I've learned how to use magnitude and direction to find my component vector, and then I've learned how to take my component vector and use that to find magnitude and direction. So I've gone forwards and I've gone backwards, so I am done with direction angles of vectors. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. If you want to get better at math, subscribe to my videos here. If you want more information on math, click on my website link here.